Good afternoon, everybody. I am Joe Flick. I'm the CE coordinator at the State Library and Suzanne Reimer, one of our amazing consulting librarians um, who is based in the Billings East office. We jokingly refer to our houses as offices. Um, is going to be conducting our tour this afternoon. So as our tour guide, Suzanne, take it away. And welcome to our next session of Aspen. You know, learning and loving Aspen, we like to call it. And today we're going to do registering for an event and um, getting your CE track. So I'll stop my video so you don't have to look at me or I don't have to look at me even more importantly. So we're starting off at the State Libraries page here and we will go to our favorite link, Aspen, the new library directory, which I still wonder why we call it that. But um, as you can see, I'm already logged in because we've got you know my name over here, so it recognizes me. If you aren't already logged in, you know I would go ahead and do so at this point. But I needed to go and find the link for this anyway, so I figured let's do it all at one time. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look for and register for an event. And so, um, you know, you could go directly to search Aspen over here on the right hand side, or you could click on events. Usually I just go ahead and click on events. And we wait because this is what we always do when we're doing stuff in Aspen. And then also you have a couple of choices when you're here now. You can search if you'd like to, and we'll do that in a sec. Or you can just go ahead and select your event from the calendar. And so generally, if, if I'm looking for something that I know is gonna be happening really quickly, it's easier for me just to um, go right to the calendar and go from there. And so we see we've added a bunch of new stuff in here that we could click on and look on. I'll do one as an example, just to show you on here, the trails webinar, because there's something a little bit unusual about this one. And when it helps to actually read the directions on these, for, so for this trails webinar, if you're interested in taking this, when small things make big impact, exploring intersectionality, privilege, microaggressions, and implicit bias, you notice in the description, it tells you to register with Trails. Use the link below to the registration page. Register in Aspen only to claim CE credit toward MSL certification. So, um, so the register now part here would just be, you know, leading you to certification. You need to go and register to the Trails for the Trails website because this is not something that we're offering. Yeah, in this case, the link actually takes you to the trails page. Yeah, we do try. This I do, link. Yeah, this link. yeah, I do try so, to add things to the to the Aspen calendar that even if they're not state library mm -hmm. created, because um, well, sometimes librarians ask me to add something, and um, and if it's in Montana, and like all the MLA events. Um, you know, it just makes it a lot easier for people to track their CE if it's already in the Aspen calendar. So what did there, there's a typo? I'll yeah, fix that. there is. Where is that? Show me. It's in I the is. bold link in the second line to claim CE credit toward MSL. Okay. So I had to just, you know, throw that out there. Thank you, Pam. I'll, I, I'll fix yeah. it. Pam. <laughs> Pam is the person she helps you know she helps check these things for us you're welcome I I really appreciate when somebody points out a typo to me because I cannot see my own typos I can only see other people's <laughs> it's the weirdest thing but I I will get it fixed and so if you wanted to you know to register for any of the rest of these you know like the next Aspen basics class you know you go ahead and do that right in here. And so in that case, click on it, go into it, and you see the link is down here. And then there's a blue box, register now. Click on that. And this is always a key thing here when you're registering. 
You notice in red, it says your event registration must be submitted below before it will be processed. So you're not done yet. You have to hit the submit button. So there's an extra step in that. But once you do that, then you are officially registered for the event and you can go to it. And I'm just going to back out because these things are easier for me. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little bit further in advance, you might want to search for it. So let's say um, I've heard something about a Director's Institute. So let's just try typing that in. And we're not quite sure when it is. So we're going to just type in that much. And you see it comes up below the calendar. And this is one of those kind of interesting things. You now, what's nice here is that the, um, the one that I'm actually looking for came up first. When I was playing around with this yesterday, I had to scroll through a couple different screens to get it because um, the sorting on here is kind of, kind of different. But um, in this case, this is the one I'm looking for. So pay attention to dates because you'll see it comes up with both current and former things. Now, since I want to register, I'll go ahead and click on this one. And this is a good chance for me to register for this anyway. And hopefully some of you will be interested in registering for this as well. See, this is coming up August 30th and goes through September 2nd. And going on down, it tells you this is, you know, this is a biggie. This is 24 credits in library administration. And there's more information on it. including an entire schedule. This is a good one to show. It's quite, it's unusual because it has a pretty detailed form involved. Yeah, now in this case, there's all kinds of things to fill in. This is not, you know, a lot of ours, you need to, you just need to, you know, click on registration and there's nothing else on there. In this case, we want, you know, lots of information from you. So I'll go ahead and give that. Yeah. Now, if you notice what's required though, only the little things with asterisks are required. Other things aren't. Which, did you mean for that to be, G Joe? Yes, but I'll probably okay. get, get after them for um, the rest of the information. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm going to just add my mobile number because that is actually my library number as well. And it, um, the, yeah, we asked for that and, and and some people don't like to give it, but it's mostly that, you know, if uh, at the very last minute or something as you're driving to this event, you know, I have, have to let you know that there's something, something happened. I'd like to have your mobile number so I can reach you. Dietary restrictions, accessibility and acceptance and we all know right whenever you get one of these that there's all of this you will read through and you will thoroughly digest all of that information and not just do like i'm doing and do a click and go through and see Save and then submit. And you just demonstrated one of the key best practices in Aspen, and that is to always scroll to the bottom of the page and look for that submit button. So, um, yeah. And because remember, you know, that first thing where you register, you know, is not it. You need to go through all the way and 
hit the submit. And like Joe said, it may be clear at the bottom. So you have to do a little bit of scrolling. So before we move on, um, any questions about event registration on that? Hopefully you've all already done this. So this isn't anything new on that. And I'm not seeing any, of course, I have my screen up in the way, so I'm counting you guys to see if there's anything in chat. Well, anyone's welcome to unmute their mic too, but there is not anything in chat. Okay, good. So that is, you know, searching and registering for an event. So the next thing we're going to do today is um, selecting your CE track. And to do that, you know, you start off with Aspen, you know, logging into Aspen and you go into Aspen admin. Isn't that right? Isn't that where we start on this? Let's make sure. Yes. No, that's I where think I started on this. It, that's you, where I start on this. <laughs> so I agree. You can go to the continuing education button on the right hand side at any time. But it's what's interesting about this page, Suzanne, is that whatever track you have either completed has and has been issued to you or is in the process is um, already displayed on your Aspen admin page in that gray box underneath your lovely and think, photo. And I think that's why I started on this page, you know, because, you know, you could see what I've already selected and what I've already finished. And then, you know, this is how I get there, you know, which may not be the, you know. There's always more, more than one way to do something in exactly. Aspen. Yeah. And so um, then this gets me into continuing education and I can look at that and you can see the tracks that are, um, as Joe said, they're already completed on here. Um, this was my last one that I completed on January 1st of this year and, um, or that I had until January 1st of this year. Oh no, complete. it was issued. It was issued. Okay. Yeah, it says it's issued. Yeah. I get confused with these things sometimes too. That's okay. Um, and this is the one that I'm currently in. Yep. So the other one probably expired, it looks like. And at the end of at the end of January, but you're not required to keep a certification. So you can take as much time as you need. And but then I can like just kind of I can just kind of scroll down and see where I'm at with this. And, you know, I can see I've got um, lots of library administration credits. Lots. I've lots. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got oodles of those. Um, I've got, you know, lots of technology credits. I, I, I will get, in fact, I probably have enough library services to the public credits. I just haven't entered them all. Um, what I'm lacking in is collection management and tech, technical services. Not terribly surprising. But uh, so that's where I'm at with that particular certification. And I'll get back into. The question from Joey is, uh, what did you just click to find your CE credits? Oh, that's so scroll down, Suzanne. I just I just started. Well, I went. Right. I clicked on the active track that I'm in. And you that's the same link as you would find on your library mm -hmm. ad, admin page uh, in the in the gray box. This takes you to the record for that certification track. And then I just scrolled I just kept scrolling down until I could see where I was at it. And then, you know, I can actually see the details of the credits that I have submitted on that. So just so you know, um, like a library director might ask a staff member, you know, for a report on how they're doing on their certification and library staff members can go in and see this. And it's easy to cut, to copy and paste from, from that list below. Now, if I wanted to do um, a different one, like let's say I was changing positions or, um, or I wanted to add a different one, um, like let's say I was also now a trustee 
or I'm going in the first time. You know, notice down this next section, you know, this one is view edit current certification track. Down here we have add new certification track. And so I could select a different one. I'm currently in library administrator, so that's not an option. Instead, I have the other ones as an option. So I could add one as library staff, or I could add as trustee, or I could add strategic track. Yes, <laughs> that's our, that's our, that was just added. That was one of the things Chuck did just before he left. So um, you are now able to, if you, if you would like to um, choose the strategic track and do away with those pesky cate categories. Um, that's not the reason you should do it, but, um, but it is an option for anyone who has previously earned um, a certificate some other way. So, so Kathleen has a question. Would you add a new track if you were close to receiving your certification and had excess credits in one category? Um, no, because when you when the cert, your certificates issue, Kathleen, whatever credits you have are consumed up at that time. You're expected to get new credits toward your next certification. It is it isn't honestly, it's not at all unusual for me to get a certificate application with somebody that has 120 or 130 credits. And um, it's all up to you about when you actually submit. So if you're worried about losing credits because they're going to get used up when you don't you know for the, and their overage overage credits then submit sooner <laughs> you know um that's all that's the only advice i can give you but as of the date that you submit those credits are used whether they're extra or not like if you notice i have 97 and a half total ce credits in here already and that's not even with adding mla recently. So I have more than enough credits. They're just not in the right categories, which I think is what happens to all of us most of the time. You know, we tend to get a lot in, you know, in a few categories. So it'd be really nice if those would go over, but then those will, those would also be the categories in which I would most likely have a lot of credits next time. So it wouldn't help me all that much anyway. Yeah, and I think when it was explained to me, I didn't I didn't create the rules for the certification program, but I do enforce them. And when it was explained to me, the idea was that they wanted each certification to represent a new a new learning journey, you know. So there's that. I was just showing you really quickly, you know, how you can get in to that the other way. So, you know, if you're on the administration page and then you know, we started off by um, going there for the general section. If you wanna get in and look at what your, um, where you're at with your certification and what your credits are, um, you can just click on your active link right there and it takes you in. And then once again, you can scroll down to the bottom and see where you're at with the credits. So any other questions? Here's one in the chat. Yeah, Kathleen has another one. I was thinking that basically you would start your new certification before submitting your current one. Yeah, but it won't work that way um, because when you're, whenever your issue, your certificate is issued, Aspen will use your issue date as the start date for your next certificate. So you can't like overlap different tracks. It's actually smart enough to know that <laughs> Aspen is. So for instance, you only need three more credits total, but they have to be in technology and you tend to live webinar for library services. Oh, well, here's one way you can do that. You can beat the system, Aspen's system. Ooh. Just no, it's not really beating the system. If you're if something like that happens, I would recommend not putting those credits in until after your certificate is issued. And um, the current the current one that you're just finishing up, save those credits, put them aside. Don't don't enter them. Um, if you have come to one of our events and we've taken you taken your attendance, you're out of luck because that's recorded on that date or close to that date. But if it's something that you're attending a conference outside of the state library, you could save those credits and enter them later. That's perfectly acceptable. Does that answer your question, Kathleen? It's a really good question, by the way. Okay, 
cool. Yeah, strategies. Actually, I you know people ask me sometimes, you know, is there any advantage to submitting your certification early? And that's the only one really is that you know then maybe. But every time you submit your certification, you have only four years to submit the next one. So it's really a personal choice. You can I know people who wait until the end of that four year period to submit and some that submit every time they have 60 credits and they're eligible to submit again. So it's totally up to you. Just as long as you get it in within that four year time. Or shortly thereafter. We're not we're pretty pretty lax. There's sort of a built in one year grace period for library directors who are required to get certified. Um, all they have to do is request a deferment and the state librarian will issue an automatic one year deferment. But the only problem with that is then you're only going to get three years the next time to, to recertify. You don't get you don't get four years again. You only get three years the next time. So you're eating into your your next renewal period. So it's always good to to recertify pretty much on time. And with so much available online, you know, there's really, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for getting CE. Yeah, and I always tell people the favorite part of my job as a CE coordinator is to um, is to tell people where to go. <laughs> I don't mean tell people where to go, but to tell them where to go to find good, good, free continuing education on a topic they're interested in. So ask me. Well, if there's no other questions on that, I will stop sharing. Will you show them your to-do list first? Just real quick. It's on the Aspen admin page. Because you did just register for the Director's Institute, so it should be there. There it is. So this is the one that we're currently in which is still listed as to do, but I guess, you know, since it's ongoing. And then what I just registered for, um, for course number six, because I hate to miss any of these Aspen courses. And then the Public Library Directors Institute. Weird so. that it displays out of order like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just gonna say that, it's weird, okay. Yeah, but it, that is, you know, if you're, um, if anyone's wondering whether or not they have registered for something, this is one easy way to tell. Well, that was an excellent job, Suzanne. Thank you. Well, thank you. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. And I, before I do that, though, just if you are watching the recording, be sure to go into Aspen and claim your credit. And if you have any other questions to let any of us at the State Library know, we're all happy to help people with Aspen questions.